Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so I'm Chatur Kulasinga. <laughs> so Sumedha so already introduced me. Uh, so my presentation is all about uh, the real use cases where customers have utilized WSO2 IoT server in order to overcome the challenges uh, that they have, or otherwise uh, do some enhancements uh, over their existing businesses. Uh, so uh, these are a few uh, common use cases where WSO2 uh, IoT server has demand for. Uh, basically, uh, we started everything in, uh, with WSO2 uh, Enterprise Mobility Manager solution previously. Uh, and now uh, we have come this far, uh, expanding our limits. And uh, now we have the IoT server product. So obviously, it uh, consists of uh, uh, the, the mobile device and mobile applic uh, application management capabilities uh, as uh, EMM product it has uh, have. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, some of the use cases are, uh, common use, use cases are mobile device management and mobile app application management and enforcing parent controls over the devices, especially when it comes to uh, Middle Eastern kind of countries. Uh, parents prefer to have some controls over the devices that they uh, give to their children uh, in order to uh, follow their education and stuff. Uh, with that, actually, they uh, do some kind of a tracking uh, over the locations, and also they enforce some rules uh, uh, to the websites and the applications. Uh, those are accessible to the uh, accessible to their children. And uh, managing uh, information and entertainment systems. Uh, so in healthcare and hotel uh, uh, chain kind of industries, uh, these uh, kind of use cases are uh, there, uh, which means uh, in order to manage information about patients, or uh, if, if there is a hotel chain, in order to inf uh, manage information and uh, enhance the processes, uh, in order to enhance the customer experience, uh, the device management uh, has been used. And when it comes to uh, equipment and equipment tracking and uh, equipment management, uh, basically uh, uh, these, are being, these kind of solutions are being used uh, when uh, uh, there are entities uh, that they have to rent their equipment and uh, basically in order to uh, track these devices uh, with geofencing capabilities that we provide. And uh, with warehouse uh, equipment management and warehouse process management, uh, uh, Android wear wearables uh, kind of devices could be used in order to uh, provide instructions to their employees and uh, do some kind of a basic tracking and uh, uh, send some notifications in order to avoid uh, risks and things like that. Uh, and uh, garbage bins is a, uh, another use case that we have. Uh, in the presentation uh, in order to uh, methodically uh, recycle uh, the garbage of a city uh, with uh, optimization of uh, their resources. Uh, the first use case is about uh, an implementation, implementation related to payment terminals. Uh, this, is, uh, this has been done for Verifone. Uh, so this is the basic composition of the solution, uh, where they have their basic uh, uh, terminal that they already had. And uh, they have integrated uh, Android tablets uh, with this particular uh, basic payment terminals. And also, uh, they have integrated a software component called uh, uh, Commercial Platform. It's kind of an ecosystem uh, around the applications that they would be installing uh, to the Android tablet and the uh, basic payment, payment terminal combination. Uh, so this provides uh, PCI DSS compliant uh, uh, way to uh, use their payments uh, or use their cards uh, against these uh, payment terminals. And uh, with this uh, commercial platform ecosystem, actually they are allowing uh, third parties to uh, develop applications and uh, push these applications uh, uh, to these kind of systems. Basically, this uh, solution has targeted small and medium businesses. Uh, so they will be providing these kind of terminals uh, to uh, small and medium businesses in order to uh, manage payments. Uh, it is not just about managing payments. Uh, there are some other uh, uh, objectives that they uh, uh, intend to achieve. Uh, 
so th these are the objectives, uh, which means uh, reward customers with loyalty points because uh, this uh, particular device has uh, two displays. One is facing towards the uh, merchant and uh, one display is uh, facing toward the customers. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, they, are, they are expecting to provide a personalized service uh, uh, to their customers uh, uh, using this particular uh, system. And uh, depending on the uh, business or the vendor who would be purchasing this particular solution, they can have their own applications in order to uh, do some kind of a, a personalized uh, emotional media and uh, coupon kind of information uh, pushed to the push toward the customers and leverage beacons for store-based analytics. So uh, that is another use case that they uh, expect to address uh, using this particular solution. In that case also, they need to monitor uh, stuff using uh, IoT devices and they need some kind of a centralized solution in order to manage the, these kind of devices. And uh, yeah, so uh, these are points that I already discussed. Uh, so this is the existing legacy terminal management system, uh, which is a centralized solution that could be connected to uh, this particular solution, uh, the, the uh, device uh, combination. But for the time being, the capabilities there to connect to their existing uh, uh, terminal, payment terminal, uh, for the uh, newly introduced Android tablet and the ecosystem, they need some uh, other solution which has uh, more flexibility and uh, the capability of leveraging Android-based uh, features. For that, uh, they are using WSO2 I IoT server, uh, which means uh, against this uh, particular uh, commercial platform ecosystem and the tablet, uh, they will be using WSO2 IoT Server. I will explain how the communication happens. Uh, so basically using WSO2 IoT Server, uh, IoT server uh, they have the capability of monitoring these devices and detect uh, faulty devices, which they would uh, indicate on a dashboard uh, with uh, a particular color code. Uh, and uh, there are some capabilities uh, under monitoring these devices as well. Uh, I will explain that later. Uh, and uh, they can integrate uh, the solution with an app marketplace where they can, uh, the, the third party developers can uh, develop and push uh, applications, uh, applications to the uh, commercial platform ecosystem. And obviously leveraging Android provided advantages uh, within this particular uh, ecosystem. So these are the tasks uh, performed by WSO2 IoT server uh, in detail. Uh, so just like I mentioned earlier, they, uh, this uh, particular solution, using IoT server, they can uh, fetch the information relevant to each and every device. And uh, they, they, uh, they, they use uh, IoT server in order to uh, push uh, Google over the air updates uh, to the ecosystem. And API, APK installations in the sense, uh, the Android applications installation update remote uh, could be done uh, through the WSO IoT server. Uh, they also can lock the devices if necessary, reboot the devices, or if uh, there are some faulty devices, they can even factory reset uh, these devices. And uh, send notifications and uh, send log cat instance. Uh, if they detected some kind of a faulty device on, uh, on the dashboard, they have the cap capability of uh, obtaining the logs relevant to that particular uh, application instance. Uh, in order to perform debugging uh, in, a, in a centralized location. Uh, so this is how the typical communication happens uh, with their particular solution. Uh, so first of all, they would uh, issue a command uh, to an Android tablet, uh, a particular Android tablet uh, within their network, uh, which should be rece uh, received by the existing TMS system or uh, terminal management system. <laughs> Then uh, it does some, some kind of a synchronization and uh, WSO2 IoT server uh, will uh, stack all of these commands where the commercial platform uh, or this device combination would uh, perform a poll and fetch uh, type of an action in order to fetch all the commands. And uh, upon uh, the execution of these commands, it will return a success message uh, to the IoT server. 
Uh, they have uh, integrated IoT server because their existing TMS system uh, does not have the capabilities of uh, working with Android uh, features and uh, get the maximum advantages of it. Uh, because of that reason, they have uh, followed this kind of an uh, this kind of a deployment uh, with WSO2 IoT server. And uh, why uh, WSO2 IoT server has been picked uh, for this particular project is uh, uh, basically because of these reasons. Uh, since WSO2 IoT server is a hundred percent free product, uh, uh, obviously this ha this has uh, provided them. Uh, some benefits when it comes to uh, cost. And uh, just like any WSO2 product, IoT server is also very much extensible, so which means you can have your own extensions uh, plugged into uh, WSO2 IoT server, and uh, even you can customize the existing uh, components of the WSO2 IoT server. So this has been provided some advantages uh, because the existing uh, uh, terminal management system is kind of a legacy application uh, which they cannot customize. In order to fit into this uh, integration, uh, WSO2 IoT server has been the only product that they uh, uh, could uh, do this with. Uh, and uh, access, obviously, access to source code uh, because uh, WSO2 products are 100% open source, so uh, they have the access to uh, the source code and they know what's really going on inside uh, when they uh, install these applications. Yeah, uh, these are some additional things to note, uh, which means uh, in this particular architecture, we have to install a WSO2 IoT agent firmware into this uh, commercial platform, uh, the, the device combination actually because uh, we need to establish a connection between the Android, Android tablet and the IoT server in order to uh, do all of the device management related work. And uh, uh, the, when they integrate WSO2 IoT uh, server with their existing systems, uh, the uh, REST APIs uh, that we have exposed have been helped them because all of the features are generally uh, developed in the form of APIs uh, and uh, the UIs provided with the product are basically some facades we uh, provide over the APIs uh, that we have already developed. So because of this nature, they don't have to uh, use our WSO2 uh, use interfaces. They can uh, uh, basically use these uh, APIs in order to execute all the functionalities that we provide with the WSO2 IoT server. And uh, this has the capability of seamless integration with uh, other WSO products such as uh, WSO2 identity server that they use. And uh, also, uh, since WSO2 products are uh, compatible with LDAP uh, directories, uh, this has also been uh, helpful for them. Uh, when uh, they try to uh, enroll devices, this is the uh, activity for flow that uh, they currently are following. Basically, they have their own certificate authority service, uh, which this uh, device combination would connect to uh, when, they, when, when they start up. And um, after that, uh, the certificate authority is sending a certificate to this device combination, uh, having included the device, uh, device serial number uh, within the certificate. So uh, they are using mutual TLS-based uh, enrollment mechanism uh, to enroll these devices against the serial numbers. So this is uh, some kind of a self-registration uh, process. After that, uh, they can continuously use uh, uh, the, these device combinations uh, against the WSO2 IoT server. <coughs> and uh, this is the particular, I mean, this is the typical deployment architecture. Actually, they, are, uh, they have deployed this uh, in a auto scaling uh, manner, uh, where uh, they have a lot of uh, instances of WSO2 IoT server, so that uh, they could uh, scale up and scale down according to the traffic uh, that is being generated by these devices. So this uh, deployment uh, is based on Amazon. Therefore, uh, they are using Amazon ELB and other services such as Amazon S3 and Amazon RDS against this uh, entire system. Uh, yeah, so that is the uh, end of the very first use case. 
And the next use case is uh, uh, in-room edge device management. Uh, so this is something uh, uh, that we already discussed actually during uh, Sumedha's talk as well. Uh, so the objectives of this particular solution uh, is to provide a better custom experience uh, to their uh, loyalty club members. And uh, uh, again, uh, when, while they are providing this uh, enhanced customer experience, they have the capability of uh, collecting the user uh, uh, behavioral patterns and customers' preferences based on how they utilize the devices, uh, those are provided within that particular room. Uh, based on that, they uh, have the capability of enhancing uh, customer experience uh, with uh, his or her next visit. Uh, so this is the deployment pattern, actually. Uh, this is a different drawing, but uh, this was already discussed uh, by Sumedha during uh, his talk. Uh, basically, uh, you, you might remember these devices. So in this case, what has been done is the uh, WSO IoT server has been connected to the Android TVs. Uh, those are installed uh, in all the rooms that they have. And within the Android TV, uh, they have this particular uh, uh, device gateway. So this is the uh, device combination uh, that is being used as the uh, device gateway. Uh, and within the device gateway, uh, they have installed the WSO2 uh, Android agent in order to communicate uh, with WSO2 IoT server. And uh, with each and every device, they have uh, communication modules. Uh, and uh, these communication modules uh, can control the devices and collect information from the devices, such as controlling lighting uh, and window blinds. And uh, if the customer, if their regular customers are visiting that particular hotel for uh, attending meeting regularly, uh, they can uh, track the, uh, their calendars and uh, send some alerts uh, regarding the meeting or remind uh, to order a taxi or something. Just like that, uh, they can continuously keep enhancing uh, the ex experience that they provide uh, to uh, their loyalty, mem uh, loyalty club members. Uh, so in this uh, device gateway, you can see uh, this is the same uh, slide, but uh, the device has been uh, described uh, uh, based on the way that those are being utilized. Uh, ultimately, when it comes to the uh, IoT server portal, using the user interface that we have provided, they have the capability of controlling operations on the Android uh, TV box. and. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, the controlling the other devices, those are being connected uh, to the device gateway, uh, which is the Android TV in their case. Uh, also, uh, I mean, I haven't added uh, uh, any screenshot of the uh, dashboards. Uh, those are being utilized uh, in this case. But obviously, uh, using this uh, solution, they uh, have the capability of uh, collecting information about the usage patterns of the devices and uh, do some uh, enhancement over uh, the custom experience that they provide. Uh, the third use case is about smart bins. Uh, so this is the basic solution, uh, which means uh, there is the device administration component and uh, uh, they are connecting uh, to the smart bins which, the, which they have devices installed on. And as the uh, administration portal, they are using uh, uh, IoT server, and they are connecting to the uh, smart bins uh, using uh, an agent firmware. Uh, this is very similar to the very first use case I uh, just uh, walk you through. Uh, so this is how the enrollment is done. Uh, the first of all, the, uh, the bin has to be manufactured by uh, 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 integrating uh, the flash device uh, with uh, some kind of a bootstrap uh, firmware. So when they uh, start up this particular uh, uh, bootstrap firm, uh, not, not the bootstrap firmware, uh, the device, uh, it initiates a connection to the uh, uh, IoT server. And depending on the hardware module that they are using, uh, 
the relevant firmware is being fetched uh, by this particular uh, smart bin. So that, that is how it, uh, it has been manufactured. Then uh, once uh, this uh, agent firmware is installed, uh, a permanent communication channel is established between the IoT server and the smart bin. So after that, uh, they can use uh, uh, this uh, particular solution in order to track uh, the garbage level and uh, the location and send uh, notifications uh, to the um, centralized portal, uh, uh, giving providing some information so that they could uh, optimize their resource utilization uh, when collecting garbage uh, within the city, which means Obviously, they can uh, they can track uh, the garbage level and the garbage uh, types, and if it has to be collected immediately, they can send a, a truck immediately. But if the garbage levels are low, they can uh, they can postpone that. Just like that, they can uh, res uh, optimize their existing resource utilization based on the information uh, gathered uh, using these smart bins. So in this case, uh, they are using two types of dashboards, which means they are uh, using uh, the default dashboards uh, provided by the WSO2 IoT server. Since uh, we uh, expose all the capabilities in the form of APIs, uh, they also have the capability of integrating uh, uh, the solution in order to push information um, to some uh, third-party business intelligence tool or uh, dashboard uh, uh, kind of a uh, dashboard generation kind of a tool. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is the actual deployment. Uh, in this case, uh, there are two uh, IoT server instances, so this is not an uh, elastically scaled in, uh, deployment. It is just a static cluster of two instances. Uh, and uh, this is also Amazon-based, so uh, information are collected uh, uh, using uh, GSMA kind of a connection. Uh, yeah, so uh, those are the uh, use cases of the presentation. If you have any questions, yes. Okay, uh, I have I, a question. Uh, how yeah, do you provide? I believe it is uh, battery powered. It is, it is not connected or anything. It's battery powered already. Uh, solar. The device. Solar, solar powered, right? Oh. So, in this particular example, uh, it was actually uh, uh, solar and battery powered. And uh, they were using, uh, uh, they were actually planning to use Sigfox. Uh, so that uh, it can be made very efficient, but uh, we didn't go that way, that, that far. Uh, so uh, it was battery powered. Yeah. And uh, then uh, they had, uh, so uh, in their case, uh, power was not a uh, huge uh, issue because uh, like uh, the plan was a garbage truck would reach the particular bin at least within uh, like uh, several days. So they can actually replace the battery. They, if that is needed, or they can actually replace the module, the total module. It was just a simple bin with a, uh, with a device that you can place uh, in, in a special compartment. Oh. Yeah, so, it is a dependency. Yeah. Right? So it, it's actually, uh, it's like this now. Uh, uh, that's actually part of the uh, agents that we have developed. So those agents now, for example, in the case of Android agents, they have uh, uh, SQLite capability to process the data, keep the data. So uh, we, we generally keep that particular aspect in, uh, in consideration when we are developing the agents. Now, uh, what we have done is like, uh, first of all, we have focused on the server side server-side APIs, and then the building the agent itself is a, a different art, basically. At the bare minimum level, the agent is supposed to connect to the server-side API. Okay? But then comes the other challenges, like the network connectivity or uh, preserving the delivery order. Now in the, case of like, uh, now, in the case of a garbage bin, the delivery, like message delivery order is not important because 
you're just like sending certain sensor data, right? Whereas in the case of Android device, you might want to particularly like lock the device at a certain time, then unlock it and then lock it. So if these messages are not delivered in order, it's a problem. So in the case of Android, uh, it, we are kind of uh, safe because we are using uh, FCM for, to do that. FCM takes care of it. But uh, like uh, it's, a, it's a general challenge in, in IoT. Yes, definitely. Of course.